Hello, everyone. Welcome to One is Two X Mentor Talks. Hi, Sanie. Hi. So nice to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me today. You're welcome, guys. Today we have Sanie Oktam with us, and uh, today she's here to tell us how BIM is used in mega structures. Sanie has an extremely impressive career, but I'll quickly run through the career and try to do justice to it. So uh, she is from Turkey and she's a civil engineer with a master's degree in construction management and de department. And she's currently working in Women Technology Coordinator in Prota Engineering, which is one of the leading engineering companies in Turkey. So Sane, welcome to One is 2X Mentor Talks. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to quickly start with one small question, which is exactly why we are here with you today which is to do with your impressive career of like all of these years in the industry i wanted to know that you've done these 20 large scale projects to do with bim in this in these last years and uh, out of which three of them are shortlisted in autodex autodesk aec excellence awards so can you share the experience of using bim in these large scale projects uh, yeah, as we all know, BIM is one of the trending topics in the construction industry nowadays, and it is also one of the new approaches in Turkey, and it is a, a requirement in some public tenders uh, for almost five or six years uh, in Turkey, and I had an opportunity to work as a BIM coordinator in the first Metro Line projects in Turkey. And I took an active role in BIM implementation process like project design with BIM or three-dimensional coordination or construction activities. Um, so this experience was very important in my career, I can say that. And on the other hand, all project parties, the designer, the contractor, the consultant and the owner of the project, um, we were implementing BIM uh, for the first time in this project. And we learned a lot from this experience. And although this is the first experience, our general contractor in this project um, had an 18% of cost saving in this project. And uh, this is shortlisted in eighth excellence award. And then I worked on many being conducted Metro Line projects during my uh, career, local and international. And other project type uh, in which I had an opportunity to work in the industrial buildings. Um, automobile factories or aircraft hangars or treatment facilities or energy buildings. So as you can imagine, these projects are huge. They are very large scale. And what I observe in this project is the contribution is the contribution of BIM in this projects uh, are really important. Uh, you know, first of all, there are many stakeholders in this project. And information sharing is one of the important tasks in this project. And uh, 3D models really uh, help in making decisions. You know, we have some parties and they are not from technical side and we use three-dimensional models to come with them. And on the other hand, the process design we have in factories, which is core in this kind of building. So uh, process design requires Three, the dimensional, three dimensional detail coordination. So I can say that without BIM, it is impossible to coordinate this project. I think you are mute. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I'm saying thank you for just summing up the entire thing to do with BIM. Uh, but I have a question. So in this entire process, at what stage do we implement BIM? Um, actually, most of the design process, and uh, I would answer this question uh, as design a few years ago, because, you know, it is the first step, you have to create a three-dimensional model, and sometimes it is challenging for design companies in terms of investment costs, but it is the easy part to implement. Um, it is still like that, but we have something different now, because uh, the difference is the general contractors. Um, let me tell you the scary, scary question at the construction site. Is this the latest version of the project? You know, how crucial is this? Can you imagine that we have always a project and nobody knows that it is the latest version or not? Uh, so in traditional methods, because we were revising the uh, project according to such requirements, but we were doing this during the construction. 
So it was a very challenging process, but now the general contractors are aware of the benefits of BIM. And this is really important. They started to implement BIM in the most of the different departments like technical offices or procurement department or purchasing department. And they started to um, track, uh, follow up the progress on site model date. So it makes sense since the most important benefit we gain is at the construction site. And what we expect from BIM is to minimize the site revision, of course. But on the other hand, uh, there are facility managers and they are in the loop, and but the, their demand as uh, their demand is limited. Uh, but we should consider them uh, and we should consider BIM implementation in facility management phase as well. Uh, let me give you an example from my previous experience. One of our energy from uh, waste facility project, the facility manager uh, wanted to check the facility control points because in this kind of buildings, you have some control points to check that the, is all process visible from that point and is everything okay. And in order to ensure that, the facility manager asked to check this point during design phase and we created uh, 360 panoramic renders for this purpose and it really helped and guess what we changed some location accordingly so uh, every faces we have some impact and some positive uh, you know effect but everything starts with, with design i can say that thanks for sharing are... that story with us <laughs> uh so so as I know, Sanya, you have the honor of holding a 40 under 40 construction champion of 2019. Yeah. <laughs> and just like, how do you think, uh, because you have all of this experience in your belt, how do you think uh, BIM is impacting the construction, uh, construction industry in the recent years? Um, yeah, it is obvious that the impact of BIM is increasing dramatically every year. But I do not call it BIM. Actually, it is better to call it digitalizing because you know we have the term digital transformation <laughs> and it is affecting our industry as well, like the other industries. And although the, uh, although the adaptation process is a challenging task in our uh, industry, in the construction industry, but still we have uh, many remarkable improvements in construction like 3D printed structure or uh, including artificial intelligence into design works or some developments in visualization technologies. Uh, these developments are really important, but I would like to take your attention to a different point. And um, you know, when we, we are talking about BIM, our scale is the building, but now the scale is changing. Digitalizing is not a building scale anymore. It, it is really more than this. And now we are talking about smart cities and we, we are you know, focusing on the make everything smart in, in a city scale. So uh, the demand is increasing and it is improving. I can say that. That's correct. Uh, your, your scale is anyway so much larger than a building itself. So it's a Good way to put BIM under the belt of digitalizing. Thank you for that, Sani. And uh, do you think, considering that now BIM is a very essential part of uh, the entire process of construction, uh, is it a necessary skill set for the early, early career graduates to accelerate their growth in technology and construction? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> BIM is like the first step, and I believe that. There is no escape from technology, and we must admit that and learn how to implement it. Uh, let me share my career journey. When I graduated from college, uh, you know, yeah, we was its early stage. And by the way, uh, there is a market chain called BIM in Turkey. <laughs> and at that time, when I started to talk about BIM, people were thinking that I was talking about a market chain. <laughs> It was ridiculous. So, well, it is different now. Yeah, everything uh, is improved, and uh, the design companies, the general contractor, the owners, the clients, they are fully aware of BIM and they admit the benefits of BIM. So, I would say absolutely yes. So, uh, you know, you are a civil engineer. 
sorry just let me check my internet yeah so sanya you are a civil engineer and uh, all of the engineers have a very uh, important question career option for civil engineers who want to shift from site work to design field um it could be uh, you know the designing and constructing uh, both of these experiences are important and a bit really helps to understand the structure the geometry and really helps uh, better decision during design and this is because being pushed the designer to bring the construction requirement on board and design and create the design accordingly and therefore i believe that the site engineers will adopt beam easily to the process and have an efficient workflow in design process and also the reverse one can also work it it, it could be a good experience it's interesting to know how beam is sort of bridging the gap between the engineers and the design aspect of construction yeah yeah uh, unfortunately we have this gap but uh, you know when you graduate uh, there are not many options and just you you find a job and you work as a design engineer or a construction engineer and when you want to change this and um, it can be difficult but i believe that we can really help during this process because as a design engineer you can have and um, you know have an idea about what kind of structure you are trying to designing and you can better understand uh, you can have an engineering insight and as a coordination engineer okay you have you know sometimes lack of design um, experience but you can integrate this your construction site experience to design process easily if if you have a beam workflow in your design works that's correct kani sani i have one very uh, personal question for you uh it's not common to see women in the construction industry right and uh, as i know you are the regional head of the women in bim in turkey yeah so how do you see this trend changing uh, with respect to bim now um thank you very much for this question <laughs> actually i can talk about this issue for hours <laughs> um what i believe is <laughs> bim uh, has very positive effect on this Uh, the main idea behind bim is you know being collaborative considering all of the disciplines and all project parties actually bim teach us how to work together better and how to be respectful for others and i think this idea really affects the industry approaches or i don't know maybe i i want to believe this <laughs> but well, i know uh, many women in bim roles uh, in turkey or in international and women in bim community uh, supports women around the world in bim roles and with female professionals within the ac industry you know sometimes you can think that i am am i the only one but you are not and you can follow and you can be a member and uh, by the way i would like to invite the professionals to become a member of women in bim because there are a really good mentorship program you can match with a mentor around the world and you can share uh, his or her experience or you can share your experience and you know what so you don't have to be a woman to do this as a man you can be a member as a male you can may professional you can share your experience and contribute and support women around the world in bim roles Uh, can I can you just uh, try and explain a little more about women in bim i'm just curious uh, yes uh, i will be happy uh, women in bim is a, a community and uh, it supports a uh, woman around the world in bim roles and of course helps to find some jobs or helps to you know learn about bim and you can also access um, some resources and there are some podcasts or organization events you can follow this and uh, we are regional list so you can reach the 
uh, leads for your region and you can ask questions and you can help to improve yourself. And I really suggest the mentorship program, which is awesome. I am one of the mentors uh, in scope of this program. And uh, you, you, you can match uh, anyone from the, around the world. And um, I think uh, four or six sessions you have with the mentor and you share your experience. The mentor guiding you has to, you know, improve your beam skills or has to find a real job in the industry. So um, as a student, I would follow and I would uh, be a member. Uh, I believe that it, it will help to students. That sounds extremely interesting, Sani. Uh, so now that I know that you've curated a professional, been professional course with One is Two X, uh, how do you think it's going to help the AEC professionals to enter the BIM field? Uh, most of the companies uh, accept the benefits of BIM, as we all know, and now they are trying to implement it. And then uh, they, what they notice is they are suffering from not being able to find qualified people for BIM roles. Actually, we call it as a challenging when you try to uh, implement BIM is a challenging one of the challenging tasks to qualify uh, people from the industry. And unfortunately, our educational system does not cover any topic directly on BIM. Unfortunately, and we graduate from college and we see the real industry, which is quite uh, different from what we learned in school. And, you know, there are many things to do, understanding the idea of BIM or learning how to work collaboratively, understand the needs of other disciplines and software, uh, software operations, software practice, they are, these are really important and experience. And these are not coming from school with us. And this is very hard to improve yourself. And these are the basics, actually, uh, when you start a BIM career. And I believe that at the end of the, this course, uh, you will have an opportunity to take a BIM role in the real industry, and you can, you can improve your BIM skills. Wow, well, Sani, that sounds damn exciting. And I'm so glad that you you are leading this professional course to do with BIM at One is Two X. It's a very huge contribution to the industry itself. Uh, yeah, I so I have a few questions for you, uh, Sani. Would you like to take them up? Of course. So uh, someone is asked: Is BIM a mandate in all large-scale projects? Uh, I, I had a uh, cut. I, I couldn't hear you. The question is, do you th think BIM is a mandate for all the large-scale projects? Uh, actually, it depends on the country. Uh, for example, there are some mandates in our public projects in Turkey, but there are many projects uh, which is not BIM, BIM is a requirement in standards. Um, it can be, but uh, you know, okay, you can mandate BIM in a project, but you need something more. You need the team's qualified uh, people, and you need good procedures, and you need good technical specification. Putting a mandate is not the only solution. If you would like to uh, create a mandate as a country scale or in the project scale, you, you have to organize everything accordingly. And considering you have uh, had done such large number of large scale projects, uh, what do you think has been the difference since BIM has been introduced? Like what is to do with the large scale project without BIM and now doing large scale projects with BIM in it? Yeah, actually, um, when I graduated from college, I was working as a coordination engineer in one of the Metro Life projects, which is um, in, in traditional methods. So I observed uh, this process, and then uh, in Turkey, the uh, contract uh, with BIM requirements started, and I had an opportunity to work in a BIM Metro Line project. So I can compare this to a different process. Um, you know, we, we have some uh, plan or sections in two-dimensional and traditional workflow. And in Metro Line, they, they are, by the way, underground station and we have underground tunnels and we have tunnel section, which is like that. So 
So you could just uh, plan from that and you just locate all the equipments. And in two dimensional 2D plans, uh, you are not able to, uh, you know, uh, detect any clash with the curve of the tunnel. And we were just locating, we were replacing all equipments, all the technical rooms during this, uh, you know, uh, to the dimensional traditional process. And what we realized uh, when started to coordinate projects with BIM, we always having clashes with the, you know, cars and we have to locate all the equipments. This is just one simple, uh, you know, tiny little sim uh, sample. And we have many, many things. Uh, it's a little hard to make an accurate, an accurate and correct coordination in two-dimensional plans. It, it doesn't work like that. So 3D coordination is one of the most important beam use, in my opinion. And uh, in, in cons considering these uh, global projects that you're a part of, when, when people are working across the world on this project, which is happening in one part of the world, how do you think BIM has played a role in accelerating that bit? Um, yes, uh, it helps because, uh, you know, we have some solutions, we call it common data environment solution, and we can work uh, collaboratively on these platforms. And if we had pandemic, <laughs> and so we know that we can we can work uh, online and we can having meetings online. We can easily share the model and everybody can understand and we can have access to direct this kind of platforms. So uh, and you can synchronize your data, uh, you know, uh, real time with with uh, other uh, employees, your colleague from another country, and you can work like that. The only thing you require is good internet <laughs> and sometimes you you don't need uh, any powerful uh, computer you know we were uh, we had lockdown and we were working from our homes and we were just using uh, VNC connections and virtual connections and uh, we, we do not require a good computer and just we were using our computers in from office and uh, technology helps <laughs> and BIM, BIM really helps <laughs> That's good to know. That's good, that's good to know that uh, BIM has been of a great help during the lockdowns for all of you. Uh, someone has asked about uh, what is the most challenging part of BIM? Um, the implementation process, <laughs> I think, because, you know, uh, you, you have to prepare goods. Uh, uh, there are two steps uh, when you decided to implement BIM. The one, one is organizational change and the second one is operational one. And first of all, your organization is going to be changed. You have to admit that uh, because your ro roles is going to be changed and you, you need to hire some people and you have some experience um, you know, employees, and they, they are very good at designing, but they're not able to use BIM softwares, and you're going to hire some young <laughs> engineers or architects which uh, who are able to use the BIM softwares, and yeah, you are going to merge them. So this is a very challenging process, and you have to prepare a good plan for this. And on the other hand, um, there is a project process and you, you always have time limitation and cost limitation but you have to buy some new softwares and you have to pay for it and this is also an investment cost and so this is one of the challenging tasks um, and in the first project uh, you know it's like a guide and you learn as I explained from my experience it was the first BIM project in our case and we were all of the parties we were implementing BIM for the first time but we learned a lot from this project and after this project all metro line um, projects uh, were tendered with BIM requirements but everybody uh, learned from this project and we, we were more we had more experience when we compare uh, this one so you you should know that your first project is a project uh, will be guiding you in the future and maybe maybe it is going to be a tough process but you should admit that and you shouldn't give up <laughs> you you should you know proceed all the time and if you implement this and if you create your 
organization in a new way, which is proposed to BIM. And I believe that, and second and third project, you, you can understand the benefits of BIM. As I hope you heard her, she gave the golden birth to be uh, absolutely involved with them because there is just no end to it. Uh, Sai, somebody wants to know if uh, you can describe how civil engineers uh, are involved with them and what is their role around them? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, civil engineering is very large. <laughs> there are many areas uh, we learned from school. We, uh, when we graduate, we can work as a structural engineer or civil engineer or project managers, and there are many areas. And um, we have we have some different workflows. As an architect, okay, architecture, each design starts with the architecture, an architect creates the design, and uh, with BIM process, you just implement uh, the software and you create the design. We can, of course, it is not easy, but it is easier than, but as a civil engineer, and um, from structural perspective, we have some uh, limitations uh, with software or uh, with workflow uh, because, you know, we create um, the three-dimensional structural model and we would like to use this model directly for the analytical um, calculations. And sometimes it's not possible, it's possible, but there are some problems. So uh, we have to, you know, we have to optimize the workflow and we have to make it uh, control by, by controlling each step. And from civil engineering perspective, um, it is the most <laughs> difficult part because, you know, we, we have um, the terrain, and especially in infrastructure wor works, we have um, some software, but they are mostly to, to the base. And when you try to transfer this data to three dimension, it's not like a system family in Levit. You just have a, a library, you just have like a column put uh, into a model. It's not like that, uh, you can imagine. You have tunnels with a different geometry, you have the terrain with every point is different and it's really hard to create this kind of families. It is really hard to work with these families. And so it's a challenging process, but it is improving uh, every day. And there are uh, new software solutions and the software versions that they are improving uh, with the new uh, newer version. And yeah, you can create a workflow, but you should keep in mind that you have to uh, control it step by step uh, and you have to make sure that you transfer uh, the information from one step to other one in a seamless way, in a smooth way, because you know the inf information and the data is the most important thing in BIM process. But uh, you know, as a civil engineer, civil engineers are the you know a part of this process, and I'm a civil engineer, and I got my master degree from construction management department because I really uh, don't want to be a structural engineer. Uh, but my role uh, previously uh, on BIM, uh, my role was as I worked as a uh, coordination engineer and I really enjoyed. I am okay, I'm a civil engineer, of course. I I learned about structures and structural analysis or to, from civil engineering perspective, but I would like to use this information for the coordination works and um, that it helps to learn about architecture, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering. I really enjoy and you can plan a career like this, or as a structural engineer, of course, you can integrate your task, uh, your data to BIM environment. And as a civil engineer, uh, this is the challenging part, but I really find uh, this process, uh, you know, um, good. And it is, I enjoy working with the civil engineering uh, teams. So you can also uh, research, uh, uh, have a research and development works uh, in that area because, you know, we have some limitations you can solve this kind of problems. So civil engineers can select a BIM career, uh, definitely. Uh, while you were just sort of explaining your journey, Sane, I uh, am curious to know about how the BIM gets plugged in and like a civil engineer uh, like you wants to jump into a role of a technology coordinator how does bim like gets plugged into this career um 
Um, yeah, actually, it, it's everything started with BIM because I, I uh, have met BIM uh, at the end of my uh, college year. Uh, I was graduating and uh, I met BIM and I found this uh, really interesting. What was interesting to me is, uh, you know, creating everything three dimensional and I can I can imagine that the architectural education system you have class section and you create sometimes models and it is easy to imagine the building. But as a civil engineer, we own some projects before graduation and it is really hard to understand the building by looking on the plan and section. Okay, I, I don't think that, yeah, <laughs> we are just trying to create a three dimension. It is hard for us. We are not, uh, it, it's, it doesn't work like I that. <laughs> So uh, I just uh, found a way <laughs> which creates always three-dimensional model, and I think that okay, it is easier. <laughs> it is not necessary to create use your brain <laughs> to, to create uh, and understand the building and create it three-dimensional. So uh, I like that idea, and then I just thought about this, and I I learned that okay, we have to learn software, and I met uh, with Revit. And in the beginning of this process, it was very difficult for me to learn uh, because I really uh, had some problems to understand the logic behind Revit. And I can admit that I still have <laughs> some problems, but uh, you know, we, we uh, learn uh, the concept of BIM. And now we know what we need during this process and we are just trying to solve by using Revit or other, uh, another software. Um, so BIM really helped and uh, by, by using these softwares and what you understand is, okay, BIM is more than just creating three-dimensional models. Okay, this is, we can call this as a first step uh, because uh, if you have an information model or a smart model, you can do everything and you can, you can improve uh, this model uh, forward. And, so what you need is only technology. And, uh, you know, design and engineering companies, you always have time limitation, cost limitation, and you don't have any time to um, make research and development works, but you have to optimize your workflow, your works, and uh, you need a um, technology department for that. And that's why our company and our boards decided to create a uh, team uh, for this purpose. And this is my journey. Just I moved uh, my BIM career to BIM and technology coordinator career. And now our team, by the way, I would like to thank them because they contribute a lot during uh, our engineering and design process. And we, we just, uh, you know, focus on the design works with our design teams and we help to optimize. You know, sometimes you, you make something repetitively and you lose time all the time. We, we just try to solve this problem faster. We are using Dynamo or other programming language to make all the process more optimized. So uh, that's why we call it as a technology uh, department, technology team. Honey, thank you so much. You make uh, Bill sound like this inevitable technological environment of uh, AC uh, industry now and I think yeah. everybody has to one one day get onto the BIM wagon to get to the future of AC industry. Uh, uh, thank you so much Ani, I've answered all our questions but before you go I'd like to just uh, give me one word for each of the following statements. So uh, the first one is uh, BIM is um not a software <laughs> oh so that that complicates my second question which is bim is not <laughs> oh <laughs> okay bim is not replacing replacing people uh, with computers <laughs> that's a good one sani and uh, one thing that a student who will be joining one is to X BIM professional course will be taking back with them. Um, yeah, I, I strongly believe that uh, they will a uh, very competitive chance 
uh, in the industry uh, when they try to find a job. And within this program, uh, they they're gonna learn uh, how to use the softwares. And the, the most important thing, they will have a, an idea, um, the concept of BIM and the logic behind BIM. And it will help uh, during their career all the time because you know, okay, using a software, uh, you can create a 3D dimensional model uh, with many softwares, but it, it doesn't mean that it is a BIM model. And you, if you understand the logic behind BIM, you can create a really efficient workflows. And uh, I think at the end of this course, this will help students to create their, their own workflows in an efficient way. Thank you, Sani. I'm looking forward to this this uh, course and having you on it and thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us they were extremely valuable to understand the process of women in your industry yeah you are welcome thank you very much i enjoyed a lot bye sunny bye bye thank you